No cross, no crown. Many of us here have heard that saying or other similar sayings, such as no pain, no gain. Or even in Spanish, which I especially love, quien quiera a su celeste, que le cueste, which translates literally as whoever wants a blue sky will pay the cost. This truth, though, is one which we live out every day in our faith, especially during Lent. Our faith gives us the road of the cross that leads to the glory of the resurrection. In Lent, we take tangible steps on the road of the cross, leading us to the triumph of Easter Sunday. Since the earliest days, God has promised His people that He would remain with them always, even in the most difficult and trying times. Our Lord tells Abram, who will become Abraham, Look up at the sky and count the stars if you can. So shall your descendants be. God did not promise that the road would be easy by any means, but He did promise Abraham that he would remain with him and lead his people to the promised land. My friends, we have that same promise, that same covenant that leads us to the promised land of eternal life with God. As I mentioned, the road isn't always easy. A good parallel to this reality might be the religious pilgrimage. I have many friends who have made pilgrimages, especially to places such as the Camino, a weeks or even months long hike through Europe, to the Cathedral of Santiago de Compostela in Spain. They give many reasons why they go on this pilgrimage to the Cathedral of St. James. One friend even has a shirt that says, I walk long distances to get away from people. But then some others, they have a harder time quantifying the exact reasons why they go on the pilgrimage, that they know that they need to go, even if the journey will not be easy. There will be blisters, injuries, lost routes, long nights, and other unknown forms of suffering. But they know for whatever reason that they need to take this road. They need to take this road and they can't get to the glory of their destination without doing it. Now, of course, they could probably fly straight to the cathedral, but it wouldn't be the same. Something essential would be lost. And that's something that we experience ourselves as we take the road of Lent to the glory of Easter morning. Our elected candidates here at St. John's will or have or will come to know this reality quite well, as Ada, Carl, Michael, Jose, and Jeff prepare for either baptism or reception into the church at Easter, they are on a journey of purification, testing, and preparation, a journey that leads to the glory of Jesus Christ. Our brothers and sisters, we're on that same journey with them. We can see the connection between the glory of Christ and the road of the cross just by looking at our gospel readings these past two weeks. This week, we encounter the glory of the Lord in the Transfiguration, a moment when his disciples see Jesus clothed in dazzling light, speaking with the two great prophets, Moses and Elijah. But this moment of glory did not come on our road of trial, Preparation. And we see that in last week's week. We hear about, we heard about Jesus' 40 days in the desert. And in the verses right before the transfiguration, Jesus himself speaks of his own suffering, death, and resurrection, and reminds his disciples, remember, that's us. He reminds his disciples that if anyone wishes to come after me, he must deny himself take up his cross, and follow him. If the first Sunday of Lent is a striking reminder of Jesus' solidarity with us in temptation, the second Sunday is meant to remind us that the glory from Jesus' body 
is a glory that he needs to share with all of us to renew our commitment to this faith. The salvation that we have through his passion, death, and resurrection. St. Paul reminds us today that Christ will change our lowly body to conform with his glorified body. This change, this transformation, this transfiguration in his own happens only through Jesus Christ. The one who the Father calls his beloved Son calls us forward to share in the life of God so that we too can become beloved sons and daughters. We share in this life, we are transfigured as we approach the altar here in the Eucharist and experience the mercy and healing of Christ in reconciliation. Then we can allow that transformation, that glory that we receive here on the mountain with Jesus to go back out into our everyday lives. What we do here should not stay here. Just like a pilgrim on the Camino or another pilgrimage must return home, Peter, James, and John went up on the mountain and experienced the transfiguration of the Lord. But they all, including Jesus himself, they all came down off the mountain in order to complete the mission that they were given. So we must do the same. No promise, no crime. In the words of Teddy Roosevelt, nothing in the world is worth having or worth doing unless it means effort, pain, and difficulty. I have never in my life envied a human being who led an easy life. I have envied a great many people who have led difficult lives and led them well. This way, let's lead our lives well. Let's not worry unnecessarily about earthly things, important as many of them are, I know. Because our citizenship is in heaven, and we await a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's move forward on the road to the cross in joy and expectation that where it leads and where we can lead others is ultimately the glory of the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen.